Okay, <clears throat> ultimately when you begin trading options, you're going to have to choose a ticker to trade those options on. Now, most option traders have a few tickers that they really love to trade because of many issues. One being the strategy that they're using might work very well on that particular ticker. But another big issue is the liquidity of the option. Now, liquidity means how uh, much interest there is on that option in the options market. When we talk about liquidity in the stock market, it's basically the same concept. We're seeing how easy it is to buy and sell. A option that's liquid is easily bought, meaning when you put in the order, you're going to get the order filled pretty much right away. Liquid options also have very tight bid ask spreads. So you can see this here. The bid ask spread, these are pretty tight. That's only like a $5 difference, a 10 to $5 difference between the bid and the ask. And generally that's what you want. It helps you fill the order and it also gets you a better price because you don't have to go too far in between that spread. Now, instead of just sticking to a single ticker, you're probably going to be using a lot of different tickers. You're probably going to be experimenting with different strategies and with different uh, industries. So we're going to have to find a way to determine what exactly makes a stock or a, a option liquid enough to be tradable. And I was about to say stock option, but of course QQQ is an ETF here. Now, generally when you put in a ticker, you're going to have a lot of choices multiple per month. But for less popular stocks, you'll see that you don't have so many per month. ABC, for example, gets cut down a bit. Instead of having, for example, every week in August available now, you only get the first three weeks of August available and then you'll get the last one available as we near August. You can also see these numbers, there's lots of zeros down this line. This is the total volume line. Now the total volume line tells you how many options have been bought, how many are actually have been traded. Whereas the open interest tells you how many bid, how many people are, are bidding and asking. Um, if you want to go back to that QQQ, you'll see these numbers are big. There are lots of these options being traded and there's a lot of open interest. There's a lot of pe people bidding on those options. Now that's great. This one's very, very liquid. But what's the rule of thumb? How do we know when to trade? Can we trade these ABC options with zero volume? How do we know? So here is my rule of thumb. We're going to assume that you're going to trade one option. Now, some option traders like to look at the volume to see how many have actually been traded, while others like to look at the open interest because that shows how many people would be willing to match your bid or ask. I prefer the open interest method because it gives us a middle ground. It gives us the ability to trade um, on less popular, less liquid stocks, on less liquid tickers, because sometimes we really do find a company that we really want to buy and we don't want to buy it outright. We want to use the options. Earnings strategies, for example, are great because we don't always play the big guys on earnings. Playing the middle, mid-size, mid-cap, our uh, profitability goes up because the probability or the predictability of those size stocks is higher than the bigger guys on the market. So I always look at the open interest and what I do is if the open interest has 50 or more, I'm okay with it. I will, I will go ahead and make that play. So you'll see that around at the money, around the strike where the stock is actually trading, we have the highest open interest and those are usually the most liquid. In addition, the closer you get to the real date, the more liquid it tends to be. Now, this is not the case for ABC. Um, for these kind of not, not really popular, but somewhat popular stocks, the most liquid are going to be on the monthly expiration dates, dates like this one. But for everything else, if they have weekly options, the weekly options are going to be the most liquid. And the the spreads are going to be really, really tight, like a $3 spread right there. So if you're making a really quick trade or you're day trading, you usually want to go with the weeklies, the closest one you can. Um, there is 
something you should keep in mind, and it's the rule of thumb that you've probably heard in this course multiple times now. A option that is double the length of time, for example, instead of one week, now we're two weeks, is actually worth four times as much. So I would be willing to pay a little bit more and to sacrifice some liquidity and to sacrifice the bid ax spread being tight um, for this four times more option. And I talk about that in other places in the course, but the short of it is the more time you have to achieve your strategy, the better. And having an extra double um, of whatever you are opening on, like instead of having a month, you have two months, that really is not worth two times. That's worth way more than two times. That's what I've found in the past. Having a later expiration date has saved me so many times and turned unprofitable trades profitable. So I always recommend you go out a little further than you feel comfortable with and pay that extra money. It's really not all that more expensive, you'll see. So for example, um, the 137 is $155. And then you double the length of time, you're not paying an extra 155, you're paying an extra 60 or 70 bucks. But again, the point here is there's a rule of thumb for open interest. You wanna make sure you're trading something liquid enough so that when it's time to sell, you can actually sell it and you're not stuck with the option being automatically executed. So here's what you got. If you're buying one contract, for every one contract, you wanna see an open interest of at least 50. So take whatever number of contracts you're planning to buy, multiply it by 50. Now, if you're doing a complex trade and there's gonna be like four, four contracts and they're all gonna be at different places, just make sure it holds true for all of those. So if you're gonna buy one of these and sell one of these, you're okay because the open interest is high enough. Just multiply by 50, and if the open interest is above that number, you're okay for liquidity.